are you doing? Doing well. How are you doing? Good. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Uh, today, I'm excited to have uh, join us today, uh, Joseph Michael. Uh, he uh, is amazing. He's got three blogs, josephmichael.net. Uh, he's got efficientlifeskills.com and betterblogimages.com. And uh, uh, go ahead and check out, he's got a YouTube video too, which has had almost uh, one and a half million hits, uh, how to teach a six-year-old to tie shoes in five minutes. So it's just really amazing. And I've learned so much, especially with the Scrivener program that he has. And so uh, anyway, thanks so much, Joseph, for agreeing uh, to be uh, on this podcast. And uh, I just, I think people are just going to really learn so much from you. Well, great. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited. You know, I just have a, a few questions. I think people that are, um, uh, you know, especially bloggers, writers, uh, that sort of thing, people that are uh, creating something uh, from nothing. Uh, I think you just have so much uh, to share just from your journey. I've been inspired uh, as I heard your story on, I actually heard it on the podcast, uh, Entrepreneur on Fire. And, um, you know, uh, so, you know, as you started with one blog and then two, and then most recently your great success with Learn Scrivener Fast, uh, would you share a bit of your story? Sure, absolutely. It's kind of a funny story and it's it's always kind of one of windy roads and forks in the road and I always did have this entrepreneurial spirit um, from an early age, I would say. I grew up in a really highly, you know, motivational household. My parents were always entrepreneurial, you know, my dad was always starting businesses and trying things and I just thought that was kind of normal. So growing up, you know, I just had this ambition to think outside the box, to look for opportunities mm -hmm. where others might normally miss them. And um, I kind of liked being different in control of my own time. I, I don't really like to say I'm unemployable, but <laughs> I do prefer to, you know, if I, if I want to make a difference, then I want it to be directly related to how hard I'm going to work at it or uh, something like that. So Early on, like we, you know, I experimented with little things. Even as a teenager, you know, I had my own little snow cone business. Um, oh, that's awesome! It was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. My my wife now, who was, you know, then my girlfriend, were you know high school sweethearts. We kind of joined up after working those like mall jobs and like busboy type stuff. Like yeah. we hate, like our whole summers were spent just wasted away at these jobs, making nothing. And we were like, you know, we saw like ice cream people going around and. Snow cones are huge here in the Midwest, so hot and humid. You know, we put our little lifetime savings then of like $1,000 into like a snow cone machine. And we thought, hey, let's drive around some neighborhoods. We'll get some kids as like, our, you know, our yes. fan base. And yep. I mean, it was like one of the best things we ever did. We got our summers back. We worked like whenever we wanted to. And we made like twice as much. So it was like, hmm, okay. That was just thinking outside the box. And just kind of carried that over with me um, into the, the corporate world, which I was a part of up until just about the last uh, the last month I finally got away from that thanks to you know the opportunities and things I've built online now I'm able to work on my passion full-time which is that's awesome same kind of feeling I did when I was a teenager and got away from the busboy <laughs> restaurant job into the snow cone business so I'm starting to like have fun again with what I do um, so yeah I've always kind of looked for things and looked to make a difference in uh, it's been an incredible journey so far. Maybe there's some people listening that have a similar, you know, you know, is there a way I can get out of this job and just kind of work for myself? Your story is inspiring. Uh. Yeah, like, I mean, it started for me. I, I mean, I had a good corporate job, which I enjoyed, um, but I always just, you know, I kept seeing layoffs happen, like, yes. where, you know, which happens everywhere. And, yeah. you know, nothing's as, it's not like you work for the same place anymore for, yeah. you know, years and years. And, I don't like change all that often. Yeah. So, in you know, when I start to see those kind of things, everybody's scared in the workplace, and yeah. everybody's fearful. Am I going to be next? And you know, I just hated that feeling of walking in knowing somebody else holds that control over you. So that's when I kind of started to look like, well, what what can I do to supplement my income in the beginning? And it's it's funny because I tell people now, like, all I really wanted to do was make an extra three hundred a month. That was like my my huge goal. That's that would have uh, like alleviated some stress for my family. We have you know a little yes. extra cushion, and that's it. I would have been happy with that. So I started looking for um, like pizza delivery jobs. Was yeah. you know my I thought this was the answer. You know we were like Dave Ramsey fans, and they're like you know find some 
find some way to make some extra money, pay off some debt, save for a house. You know, we had a little newborn on the way. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it's I kept getting rejected by these pizza delivery places because I either didn't have uh, delivery driver experience, which I kind of found that crazy. Like, I think yeah. I could figure that out. <laughs> yeah. So I like, started to get frustrated. Like, man, yeah. I can't even get this, this side job. You know, what am I supposed to do? And it was then that led me to start looking at things online. Yeah. Seeing if I could take some of my technical skills or some of the information I grew up learning. You know, I always was listening to gosh back then it was like tapes of you know zig zig learns and all these people yeah. so like i had this wealth of information i knew i could share with people and that's how efficient life skills started was yeah. i figured you know I, I have a lot of this stuff and I, I like to do things better i like to look for out of the box ways of helping people and so that's kind of where that site started from yeah. um because I stumbled across a guy named Pat Flynn, Passive Income Blog, and yeah. when I saw that he was making a living online from like helping people, yes. that opened up a whole new world to me. I could not believe that. So I'd like spend every second researching everything I could about online business and uh, social media and everything like that, and how these people were doing this. And that's when I just wanted to get in the game. I had no idea what I was doing. I just said, you know, I got to get in the game and I'll learn along the way. Well, efficient life skills started. I started blogging. I started, you know, playing with things and testing headlines and seeing what works and what doesn't. And that was my big learning experience. And I did that for about a year with that site before I had any other ideas or any other pathways. Oh, is that right? Well, I mean, I, I totally love all three of your blogs. Um, it's efficient life skills. I mean, that's totally something that I need help with. But better blog images is, I mean, that's, you know, that's something you can use all the time. And then, of course, uh, you know, your josephmichael.net. Uh, uh, what I was noticing when I was on that one was, um, it's get, it's, you know, you talk about how to, you know, how do you do stuff while you're, you know, you have a little infant in your arms. I just, I love that. It's like bringing sort of what life is like now that you're working at home. And it makes it real for people, right? Yes. Because there's a lot of people in that situation like where you know I need to do this but I also need to take care of the kids that right. sort of thing so yeah I, that's kind of my experiment with like just bringing what I've learned with doing all of these different things just kind of back home you know bringing it bringing it to the real level um, yeah and so yeah I'm, I'm enjoying that part I, I'm, I'm learning how to just take the things I've learned and then like hey okay, let's break them down and see if anybody else has you know could learn from these things too so yes well and I mean, obviously, there's lots of people, right? Yes. Uh, yes, that, you know, have connected with what, you know, what you're sharing with them. I just think that's so great. Uh, so with all these blogs, what is the story behind these interests and how you found your voice and the message, you you know, kind of the message you have to offer the world? Um, so how, do, how did you know that that's, this is what I should blog about? Like, sort of, I guess I'm just curious about that. Sure, yeah, and it's been a journey, and it's something that I, I'm glad that I realized early on that what I'm starting might not be the end game, and yeah. I realized that even what I'm doing now may not be what I'm doing five years from now, because one okay. door opens yeah. the door to the next and the next, yeah. and when I started Efficient Life Skills, I did that basically just out of what I knew at the moment, what I was passionate about, and I felt like I could offer value, and that's what I usually tell people, is think about what you enjoy talking about in yeah. everyday conversation. And start there. It's just learn and grow as time goes mm -hmm. on. So like I said, if I if I would have waited until I had it all figured out, I probably would no. never have even started. <laughs> I've spent three weeks probably trying to think about a domain name. And, you know, it's silly thinking back about how much time we spend on little things that don't matter or the logos and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Instead of just getting out there and starting to find your yeah. voice, start yeah. writing. And start seeing what connects with people. You know, certain things I wrote, I thought, well, for sure, this is going to be a home run. Everybody's going to love this. And, you know, it got like a small amount of traffic and zero comment. Yeah. Really? Hmm. And the one that you mentioned, the um, the one video that has over a million views and like 500,000 Pinterest shares or something is, huh. is was birthed out of a, a real life problem that I had with teaching my daughter how to tie her shoes. Could not believe how difficult that was. Something we take for granted. You know, we tie our shoes every day, we don't think about it. But teaching it, oh my goodness, it's a challenge. And so I started doing some research of, you know, how in the world are you supposed to teach your kid how to do this? Stumbled across this little technique, you know, called the magic fingers technique. And like it worked in like five minutes. She could tie her shoes. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I said, yeah let's put this on the blog. You know, it was still kind of fairly new. I was experimenting with content and I yeah. said, if there's got to be maybe a handful of parents that have struggled with this too. Oh. I couldn't, a big handful of parents obviously <laughs> struggle with that same thing. And 
I learned a few things about headlines along the way. You know, I know you got to make the headline stand out. So the headline ended up being how to teach your child to tie shoes in five minutes. Yeah. And so um, it really started catching on in Pinterest. People kept sharing it and sharing it. And then, you know, Facebook took off and it just kind of had this little viral effect. And I could not believe the amount of um, traffic that came to the site. And that's where I first started to see, you know, my first dollar online with just AdSense revenue. And then I kind of started like think, this is possible. Like, this could actually be a business. Uh, you could see how it would work. Birthed out of solving a problem for people. So reverse engineering thing worked so well. And it, it really did come down to finding those, those issues for people that... They have a similar pain point. Yeah. And if you have an answer in any way or something that you can teach or bring to the table, that's uh, that's where it's at because that's where people connect with. Plus, I mean, if you can be real, you know, I was real in the beginning. Like I wrote on the post, like, hey, this is one of the hardest things I've ever tried to teach yeah. my daughter. Yeah. And people like could relate and they could connect with that. And then it's like, okay, well, here's the answer I've discovered. Same thing I've done with my Scrivener course is, yeah. you know, hey, this thing took me a while to learn. This is hard. This is a learning curve. I think I've found a way to make it easier for you. And that's where I tell people is get started and putting content out there resonates with people. Things that you learn in everyday life, it's amazing when you start to think in those terms, your everyday life becomes this constant um, thought process of, ooh, I wonder if I could share that or, ooh, I wonder if that could help people. And you got to put it out there and see what happens. And then as those doors open, um, you know, I would have never stumbled across the Learn Scrivener Fast program had I not yeah. been looking for pain points specifically. So ever since yeah. that, that post went viral with the, yeah. the shoe tying thing, yeah. I kind of became obsessed with finding like, okay, problems. I'm looking for problems that people have yes. yeah. and problems that I felt like I could help them with. And I was using Scrivener myself to, to organize all my blogs and all my writing content. So I loved it. But I had the same similar, you know, problems and pain points that people did with the learning curve. It was only because of my awareness and in, in looking for that that I stumbled across it. And that was totally different than what I was doing with efficient life skills. Yet, you know, there's an opportunity. So you've got to yes. be willing to pivot, too, in business. So. Yeah, that actually, that's, uh, that's a good point, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and as, especially if it's something, you know, that you could help someone else with, even mm -hmm. though maybe that's in your mind, you're not actually focused on that. But maybe... Right. Uh, I love that word pivot because I think that's so true, right? Just to be willing to listen, right, yeah. to where people are at. I mean, that's. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the, on the head with that one. That's that's uh, that's truth there. Um, yeah, it's it's funny when when Learn Scrivener Fast started taking off like it did, and I was talking with somebody and they said, you know, you're going to be known as you know Joe the Scrivener Coach. That's going to be your thing. And I was like, well, I didn't envision that to be my thing. <laughs> and he's like, well, too bad. It's what's working, and you're helping people, so it's your thing now. And it's like, I kind of had to accept that, like, you know, yeah, that's not such a bad thing. It's just different than what we originally think. And so yes. you've got to be flexible. Yeah, yeah. For well, sure. Well, and, uh, you know, it's just it's just awesome. I mean, uh, I would just, you know, since we're talking about that, that's like uh, just something that has helped me and so many other writers that I know. So anyway, I, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. I just had a sure. few more questions for <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I know I'm one of one someone who's really busy. I know there's a lot of people listening that are really busy with, you know, either either full time job and then blogging or, you know, writing or you know creating stuff on the side, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, what would you say is the place to start for someone who is, you know, just kind of getting started, starting to see the possibilities that this actually could be a business, um, but they're feeling like they're getting, you know, sort of bogged down with all the stuff to juggle and uh, you know not quite sure how to do things efficiently are there, are there sort of steps maybe that you have in mind or I don't know or tips oh man this is a this is a big one and I think for everybody I mean we're bombarded with so much stuff these days it's crazy and I struggle with this still today um, because there's a million different directions we can go in and yeah. a million things we can work on at any given time and I think the more you get into this online space, the more you start realizing how much there is. I got to jump over here, and oh, now I got to implement this new thing, and oh, there's an SEO strategy I've exactly. got to do, and, and it's it's overwhelming to the point where I almost I wanted to quit several times, where I just said, "This is way too much." Like, how do people do this? You know, they have, must have a team of people or yeah. something. <laughs> and I heard something from um, the folks over at uh, Internet Business Mastery. Yeah. They have an excellent podcast, okay. uh, Jason and Jeremy. 
And one of their things, they tackled this same issue, and they call it a uh, an information diet. They oh, said okay. you've got to put yourself on this information diet. You've yeah. got to strict with the information you're consuming. Yes. And that was like a light bulb moment for me because I was just like, at this point, I was like ready to quit. And I heard that, and I'm like, man, that's so true. It's like yeah. take what, whatever it is that you're studying or mm-hmm. need to get to the next step, and and just research and look at those things. Yeah. And it's hard because we always think, oh, we're going to miss something, you know? Yeah. And so, like, for instance, I was trying to learn about social media and how to use Twitter effectively mm-hmm. and things like that. So anything that was related to anything other than that, I needed to go on a diet from that and just focus on, you know, the strategy I was working on at that moment. Yeah. And that kind of, it amazingly frees up some space in your mind. And, and it's, it's a tough discipline to do, though. Yes. I still yes. struggle with that quite a bit. The other thing you you talked about there that you mentioned on is like finding the time to yeah. do things and because that is that's hard in today's world too um because there was a time when I was you know working full time mm-hmm. juggling family life and doing the you know hour commute and it's like there's a very small margin there to to do anything and yeah. I think it's if it's something you're passionate about you know yes. there's that quote and I can't remember exactly what it is but it's something about you know if, if, if you're passionate about something enough, you'll find a way. And if yeah. not, you'll find an excuse. Yeah, that's good. And I think that's kind of true in the fact that if, if, it's, if you're really passionate about it, you'll find those small moments where you could work on things. Otherwise, you'll find an excuse and say, I don't have time. I don't have, you know, there's, there's no room in this. Um, I sacrificed my lunch breaks for a good six months in order to record some of the tutorials you see in the course. Um, I would bring my laptop and, and a little blue snowflake portable microphone I had at the time and I would sit in my back seat and actually go through and record some of the tutorials uh, on my lunch break. I could do maybe two or three sometimes and it was making sacrifice that you know I just believed in it enough that I had to find the time wherever I could fit it in. Yeah. Um, and once you start looking for those little cracks sometimes you can find an hour here an hour there and they add up you know they yeah. really do add up over time but there really is no shortcut. It's just uh, it's a marathon, and it's finding those bits of pieces and just plugging away at it, doing the one next thing, and putting yourself on the information diet to learn what you need at the moment. Yeah, that is really helpful. And uh, I I just uh, I, I just you know <laughs> uh, I had never thought of it that way. The information diet because sometimes that's been my thing too. Is I'll find all this cool stuff. Okay, but if you find like ten you know neat things in a day online, it's like, at least for me, <laughs> I, it feels like my mind's getting too much. Uh, it's like, I don't know, it's like something's going to snap. <laughs> because yeah, absolutely. It's too much stuff. <laughs> absolutely. I yeah. know that feeling well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But so that's good. So that I'll, 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 you know, for those listening, you know, check out uh, Internet Business Mastery too. That's, that sounds good. I haven't uh, heard that, but that would be interesting. Yeah. To yeah. They got a lot of fantastic tips like that. Yeah. Um, so, um, I, I think you, I think you kind of uh, talked a little bit about this, but um, you know, have you had in in business? So as you've kind of uh, you know uh, gone into business now, have you had a few you know setbacks or failures where things maybe didn't go as planned? Um, and how did you overcome these or you know learn from them yeah, so that in the future you know? you'd remember and, you know, take a different route or, or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had a ton of them. Um, some stumped me for quite a bit. When yeah. I was younger, um, I thought I was invincible, like, oh, I'm just going to do this entrepreneur thing. It's going to work. It's going to be fine. I started some different businesses early on. Um, luckily, I didn't invest a lot of money into them, but yeah. they kind of fizzled out. They took too much time. I burnt myself out. Yeah. And there was a period where I thought, you know what? I guess this is just for the lucky few. Yeah. And I just resorted to, I guess I'm going to have to work work for the man for, you know, till I'm 65 and can retire. And I just need to suck it up and, you know, just appreciate what I have. And so for a good five years, I just kind of got in that mindset. But it, it always bugged me. You know, I always still have that, that entrepreneur spirit. I yeah. couldn't help but look for opportunities and, you know, just think about things and brainstorm. And yeah. it, was, uh, it was due to those failures that kind of really, you know, you put yourself out there and you open yourself up for criticism. And it's hard not to take it personally when something doesn't work out yeah. rather than just, hey, you really hit the nail on the head when you said, what can you learn from it? Because that's the difference, I think, that I've learned yeah. along the way is... 
if you can look at each new opportunity or each new thing you're thinking about trying yeah. as an experiment instead of this like life or death what if i fail you know you look at it like a like a science experiment yeah. like well let's test it let's let's go ahead and step out and try this let's see what happens either way i'm gonna learn something from it that's gonna help me in my next thing so like for instance when i started um, blogging and i started efficient life skills i was searching for like okay how can i monetize this what kind of stuff can i offer people um for like an email gift or something like that and i thought i came up with this awesome ebook idea ebooks were you know really big then everybody was promoting you know put an ebook out there i spent probably like way too long designing this thing i wanted to make it perfect and i thought it was just going to be great i you know every graphic had to be perfect and yeah. I wasted so much time on that thing and nobody wanted it. Like I put it up there and like nobody would download it. Nobody cared about it. And I was like, what is the deal? You know, yeah. this was the, the yeah. nicest looking ebook that nobody yeah. saw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and for a minute, it, you know, it, it did. It kind of felt like, okay, they don't, for some reason we take it personally. They don't like me. They don't like what I'm doing. They, this is, this is too hard. I spent three months on this stupid thing and nobody wants it. And Instead of, you know, I started to learn like, okay, well, why does nobody want it? Number one, it was something I thought they wanted instead of finding out what they really wanted. Yeah. And that was an experiment that taught me really early on to look what the people are asking for and, and yeah. build that, create yeah. that instead of what we think they need. So before I ever spent three months on an ebook or any amount of time creating something, I first want to validate that and make sure that it's something people want. And you can do that a number of ways by yeah. writing something small and, and putting out on social media and just see, is that connecting with people? Is it getting likes? And testing different headlines. And if it is, if it's a hot topic, then you kind of have the go ahead for the next step yeah. of okay well let's validate it a step further and you just kind of keep going along that way instead of you know hiding in a closet creating this thing for three months wasting all this time and not knowing if anybody wants it so i had a lot of those early on to where you know the, the crickets thing they always say you know you put something out there and you just crickets nothing yeah <laughs> and especially when we're talking with yeah. time that's a big that's a big uh, a big blow when you realize yeah. i just wasted time on this and yeah. when we don't have a lot no, of that exactly. yeah. you know it's frustrating so that was kind of my whole framework for when i learned to start a course that was successful is i knew it was a need already i already knew that people wanted it and that's a huge huge difference so you've really learned Oh, would you say it's it sounds like you've learned the art of listening that's a good way to put it i like that absolutely yeah, yeah because you know that's sort of uh, you know on social media or on your blogs whatever the comments are you know so hearing the pain points right of people and you know could you help me with this and just kind of listening so that's that's really good i think that's maybe a skill we could all <laughs> you know, learn, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. you mentioned, I like how you mentioned uh, the comments there and reading the comments because yeah. I even, uh, I tell a lot of my clients who are looking to, you know, come up with ideas or yeah. how do I find what I'm going to create next? And I always tell them, read blog comments. I mean, yeah. the blog posts are great, yeah. but the real gold is in the comments, yeah. especially when it's an article written around some sort of a, a how-to or a, a theory or a pain point of some sort already. Yeah. You could see right in the comments what people are real about and yeah. what they're struggling with, yeah. and um, that's where the gold's at. Is look for those and see what people are actually saying and the real words they're using, and those later become um, you know sales bullets on your sales page. So you feel like, oh my gosh, you're talking directly to me, and it's like, well, in a way, I am because I know the language you used. For creative entrepreneurs that are listening today, um, uh, just kind of heading in more in that direction. Okay, so. You know, someone's kind of got a blog up. They kind of know where they're going. They're kind of been listening now to what people are saying, and they're hearing. Oh, okay, this is this is something people seem to be needing. So then, the next step probably would be um, developing some type of product around whatever that was. You know, for for that for that solution. What would you say? Would you have uh, any tips? Uh, for creative entrepreneurs as they are finding uh, the voice um, to you know as they're creating products I, I guess I guess listening would be would be a big one there's like five or six different you know sort of pain points whatever that people mention how do you know uh, which one should I be uh, going with is there a secret to that or 
Um, I think it really is taking the listening step to the the next level. If you can, and if you have an audience that you can yeah. survey, yeah, um, that's great. I mean, if you can send out a survey of, and you keep it short, none of us open an email and think, oh my gosh, I don't have time for it. Three questions. Oh. What, what would help you the most if I solved A, B, or C? Even just asking a question now and then on social media, you know, yeah. you see you see the big dogs do it all the time. They'll, yeah. They're constantly asking questions on Facebook, struggling with today, or you're starting a blog, whatever you're finding the biggest challenge with yeah. it, or, you know, yeah. little questions like that. And, and the reason they're doing that is because they're always in this mindset of they're creating the next thing to help people with. And there's no better way to find it than asking yeah. your audience. So, so whichever one you're getting kind of the most response with, that would be sort of the one you'd want to start with. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, when you think you have a handle on it, you know, I would say if you yeah. if you have a blog, then write a blog post about it and see the kind of traction it gets. Yeah. If it doesn't get so much traction, maybe try, you know, two or three different headlines. Change yeah. up a headline and you can easily post a, a tweet with a different headline. Or yeah. It's amazing how certain um, certain things are really valuable, but it's just the way it's presented and the, or the way the headline's arranged that doesn't really resonate with people. Yeah. And just by changing those little tweaks. So it's a constant game of testing. You know, we're always testing. We're always trying to put things out there. But there's uh, um, this book, uh, The Lean Startup. He, he talks in the book about um, the author's escaping my name, but I'm sure you'll link it up or <laughs> figure that out. But it's uh, he talks about this minimal viable product. And the quicker that you can get that out the door, um, the, the better off you're going to be. And I mean, like minimal as in the second you have something that you think somebody could exchange dollars for yeah. um, in the beginning I did this with with my course it was a yeah. very rough draft it wasn't pretty yet it wasn't you know there wasn't a lot of graphics yeah and because a lot of people will tell you you know oh yeah that's a good idea you know I, I would buy it and, and then you say oh, would you okay here it is it's thirty nine dollars and then yeah. oh well um, <laughs> you know, so it's like a lot of people tell you what you want to hear, but the second people start exchanging dollars for what you have, so the quicker you can get some kind of a product out there yeah. and even just a very rough draft version, charge something very small or have beta yeah. testers, then you get the feedback and then you can start to see if it's something that's going to be worth investing more of your time in. Because that's something that burns people out quicker than anything, is, yeah. is they start doing something they think is great, but it's it's just not, maybe the audience isn't ready for it yet, maybe... Maybe it's not as great as they thought, and yeah. Yeah. you've got you can't figure that out unless you get out there and you get real real testers and users and yeah. people. So, yeah, I guess uh, active listening, I guess, would be my best answer yeah. to that. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about your online course, which mm -hmm. has been amazing. The Learn Scrivener Fast, and those of you listening who haven't, um, you know, gotten that yet, uh, I mean, that's just <laughs> that's really going to help you with your writing, uh, but. You know, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I think you've touched on this a bit, uh, like you talked about, you know, sort of the ins inspiration behind, behind the course, but would you share sort of the story of how that came about and, uh, you know, uh, just the sort of the background of that? Sure, absolutely, yeah. So, I mentioned earlier, I was using the tool, you know, Scrivener, just to organize all of my content. And most people, you know, it was originally designed for writers, writing really... Uh, in-depth novels and things like that yeah. because it has yeah. the really robust features in there where you can organize and write in chunks and move things around and to a really really high level but I found it great just for its um, its organizational features as far as outlining and brainstorming and it's got this cork board you know with with realistic index cards that yeah. you can move around and especially for those who are really visual learners and stuff like me um, it just is awesome so I had every blog post, you know, either in a folder that was listed by category or month and date. And mm -hmm. when you're writing, you know, gosh, two blogs and you're trying to write three posts a week and all that, it gets overwhelming and you've got files everywhere on your computer. And I just, I don't think you're efficient if yeah. you're disorganized with all that. So Scrivener really ties it all in. Yeah. But long story short, I had been using it for that. I was a huge fan of it. And as I was just reading the people that I follow, um, Michael Hyatt is one of the, the blogs I've always followed. I love his content. And, you know, he mentioned this blog post of five reasons why he switched to Scrivener for all of his writing. And I was like, oh, cool. Michael Hyatt's using Scrivener too. Um, what does he have to say about it? And 
So he was mentioning how he's using it for writing his blogs, which is kind of an uncommon thing then. You, you normally only heard it from like novelists or serious, you know, big time writers. And I was like, cool, he's using it for blogging. Kept telling people, if you're a blogger, you're writing. And Scrivener's awesome for that, you know. And so I'm, I'm glad to see that's like really catching on now. I get more requests for that, of course, than anything. And so, again, in the comments of that blog post, I was, at the time, I hadn't even thought of the course or anything yet, but I kept seeing people talk about the Scrivener learning curve and yeah. how they bought it and they tried it, but they gave up. And, and like over and over and over again, same kind of story. Yeah. And, you know, a couple people would mention, well, if you looked at this, uh, you know, this, this book's helped me or that or, you know. And then somewhere, Michael Hyatt himself said, you know, if there was a, 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 a real legitimate course on this, I would buy that right away. And I, I couldn't believe that maybe there wasn't, because I remembered struggling with Scrivener 2, yeah. and I was looking through YouTube and yeah. things like that, and I was like, gosh, this thing's kind of hard to learn. I can't yeah. believe there's not a real, you know, a real good course on it somewhere. And it was kind of like that light bulb moment. Hmm. I think I'm, I have a handle on it pretty good, and some of the tutorials that I had done on efficient life skills and things like that really were well received. And I always got comments on, you know, people love the quality and the look of it, and and I enjoyed that part of it. So, you know, I thought, hey, I, I bet I could come up with something good yeah. for Michael, and then I'd share it with him. And I was like, I could probably do something in a weekend or two. And I was really naive back then, looking back and thinking how long things take to create. Uh, so I started on that. Um, I probably started that weekend, you know, I got a domain name and just kind of started the site and yeah. kind of an outline of what I thought people would want to know from start to finish. And and then I started reaching out to people and seeing if it was helpful for them. And it was, um, it was getting that early, early feedback yeah. from people that it was. And that's where it started was right out of the comments of the blog post where people kept talking about the pain points, how it was to learn. And then that started a whole slew of research for me so then yeah. I started researching every blog post that I could find on anybody who wrote anything about Scrivener you know going through all the comments making notes on all the things that people mentioned mm -hmm. what they loved about it what they found struggling you know what they were struggling with and started compiling a master list and started going through and that's kind of how it was born it's about a, a year uh, yeah. of work that went into that process so yeah. well, two or three weekends is highly unlikely <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, so maybe sometimes it's good that we are naive at the beginning. That's true. Because maybe then we aren't going to feel so, I don't know, uh, overwhelmed. Because maybe if we saw it to the end, you know, as we started, maybe we'd get overwhelmed. That's, I don't know. That's true. If somebody <laughs> told me that this is going to take you probably a year before you really are happy with this thing, I, yeah. yeah, that would have scared me a little bit. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Well, I mean, and you did such a professional job. It's just amazing, your your course, really. Uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone uh, because it's just so easy to learn. And, and the videos are short, like they're not really long. And I, I appreciate that <laughs> because, no, then you can go back to each specific thing, you know? Absolutely. If, if you miss something, you can go back to the specific one that you're wanting to look at. So um, I've found that really helpful. Cool. I'm glad to hear you say that yes. part because that was kind of my favorite little feature about it too, and I'm, it's really been so well received. And because there's this challenge of how do you take something really complex, you break it down into something that feels manageable and feels not so overwhelming. And I put that together with some research that's been done lately on people's attention spans, how people view even YouTube videos, where once we hit that two-minute mark we're kind of lost you know we can't we can't keep the attention that we used to yeah and so I took that into the course and I thought well I could either create you know five maybe 20 minute videos yeah or I could break them down and create 25 minute videos and that just seems to work so much like they're making progress oh I can just jump in and watch this for two or three minutes and uh, yes. it, it makes it feel easier and yeah. more fun to learn that way yeah. in my opinion at least and then you can always sort of uh, go back to where you ended and keep going I really appreciate that mm -hmm. it's just really helpful cool. uh, so you know would you just talk just a little bit more about you know the learn Scrivener fast program because you have there is different sign up levels mm -hmm. um, you know and it is for writers and bloggers just you know it's for I don't know and it's probably for just anyone really who is you know writing 
Absolutely. Yeah, I got to take my passion into it. Like I said, how bloggers can use it. Yeah. And just all writers in general. It's funny I have everything from, you know, public speakers to, you know, preachers and full-time writers and best-selling authors, all kinds of people in my course now. Yeah. And even attorneys, you know, everybody's finding this so useful. But um, I've, I've designed it in a way that there's a basics version to where it just talks about the basics of Scrivener and will get you up to speed quickly um, from learning the interface to learning what all the buttons do and what everything is. But then I've added other sections of um, a Scrivener for Bloggers section that's specifically how to use it for blogging type stuff, how to use it and transfer things to WordPress. And uh, then there's kind of a... Um, an efficiency type uh, yeah. module. It's called Work Smarter. And a lot of people ask me, how do I deal with my research when I'm taking everything in Evernote mm-hmm. or things like that? And so I kind of show people how to use Evernote, how to bring in research and do things like that with, um, with also a heavy uh, touch on using it with different writing apps and syncing through Dropbox and things like that until yeah. Scrivener gets their own tablet version, which hopefully they will be doing soon. Yeah. Um, there's some fixes and things like that in there, um, and then of course there's there's the ebooks, which is one of the huge draws. It's ebook yeah. publishing so easy; it takes all the heavy lifting, does it for you. But it's a little overwhelming at first when you see the you know the compile screen for the first time and what does everything mean. So yeah. I walk people step by step through that, yeah. and I wanted to make it if if somebody just wanted to get up to speed quick with the basics, they could. And so that's kind of the basics package, and then all the way up to, I have what we call a, a ninja level package, which yeah. is absolutely everything I've ever created on it, and it's evolved so much over time. There's like so much content in there now, um, with these bonuses and different things. It's it's funny because I I did end up finally connecting with Michael Hyatt. That was like my goal with the course because he was the one who originally said if there was a course on this, he would buy it. So. I got to work with him and create this special workflow especially uh, for him with Scrivener and working with an editor because yeah. once you get to that process you know they're using Microsoft Word and they're making you know they're using the track changes and the comments and then uh, his point was that he hated that the Scrivener part was finished at that point like now you had to stop using Scrivener and go to Microsoft Word yeah and so I ended up working with him and creating a complete workflow of how you can work with your editor, use Word yeah. and Scrivener together and in a really highly organized way. He loved that and he's been actually a really big um, you know, proponent of the course and helped me get the, get the word out there and that really kind of changed everything. So I owe him a lot <laughs> as far as helping me spread the word for that. Um, so there's things like that in the course and yeah. bonuses like that and um, I've even done some, you know, we've done a webinar with with Joanna Penn where we showed some behind the scenes stuff of how she uses Scrivener and all kinds of neat things in there so it's really it's it's work at your own pace and so there's is there's a lot of information but as you know you can just jump in and do what what you want yeah and I kind of made it that way too because that's what I wanted so I kind of created something that I I wish I would have had it's like this this resource and I tell people I don't know if this makes me a good teacher or bad but like I go back and watch some of my own videos sometimes because you could be using a particular feature in Scrivener and then you might not use that again for six months and then you might forget how where was that or how did I do that again and you can just easily go back and watch that video or look at the screenshots and just you know, in three minutes, your problem solved. Instead of hunting all over yeah. a big book or something that will get me to the solution in like right. three yes. minutes, I'm so happy for that. Yeah, absolutely. There's something to be said about people who are just show me what to do. You know, I hear that phrase yes. all the time. Just show me what to do, and I'll do it. I don't want to like have to figure this all out myself. And that's that's one of the pain points I found with writers is yeah. writers just want to write. Yeah. That's all they want to do. They don't want to mess with software. They don't want to try to figure things out. And so. That was what I tried to solve for them, is to create a program that, here, you don't have to think. <laughs> I'll show you what to do. Just watch my screen, click yeah. where I click, and then you're done. Yeah. So. Oh, it's just awesome. And I appreciate you putting all that effort into the course. <laughs> Absolutely. I think there's I'm, a lot of people that do that are yeah. appreciating that. I'm glad I found some place where my perfectionism pays off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. So, um... Uh... You know, I'm, I'm, we actually already talked about this, but I, I'm so glad uh, that you know you show you know you showed stuff like the research folder. That's been so helpful for me too, and because I had no idea how to do that in Scrivener, and uh, you know 
that sort of joe thanks so much for sharing uh thanks your so journey today sharing. it's been amazing uh uh you know i'm sure listeners would be interested uh to hear new projects books or courses that you know maybe are in the works right now yeah sure so um since i'm kind of back in the, the beginning phases of creation again yeah so i'm i'm researching and studying my audience and <laughs> When you get to the point where you have an audience, they naturally start to ask you questions, which is, yeah. which is huge, yes. um, because you could take those questions and you know that those are little golden nuggets of potential training opportunities. Yes. So, it's for every Scrivener question that I get, which is a lot, I probably get at least half as many questions about how I created the course itself. You know, the the real nuts and bolts of okay, okay. I, I have a product in mind. I think I want to package this up. How do I do it? You know, where do I go? Do I use do I use WordPress? What plugins do you use? Do you you know, how do you make the graphics? And so I'm kinda of working on a little project to help people out with that. I'm speaking at um, FinCon, which is a financial bloggers conference, but they have a lot of uh, a lot of helpful different sessions and I get to talk on how to create a digital product, seeing what the biggest pain points are for people yeah. in, in packaging up their product. And yeah. I'm hoping to break it down just like I did the Scrivener course and make it easy for people to um, you know, bring their product to life and get their own course or a product online. So that's what I have in the works now to get this one out, though, because I've learned a lot along the way. Yeah. No, well, and, and that's true. Once you've done it once, right? Maybe yeah, absolutely. it goes quicker the next time. Thanks so much, Joe. Such helpful tips and ideas, uh, just in helping you know, you know, uh, just people who are blogging, writing, um, just creating products of you know any kind online and starting a business and all of that. I mean, it's just kind of it's a nice big package. <laughs> and so I just appreciate you taking the time today. For anyone who's listening right now, uh, you can find uh, you can find Joe at Joseph uh, JosephMichael.net. And at uh, efficientlifeskills.com, uh, as well as betterblogimages.com, and uh, and do check out his uh, Learn Scrivener Fast course. You will not be sorry that you did. <laughs> uh, so thanks so much, Joe. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. It's it's been a blast.